whatever the kind of the spiritual law of the land is, you know, when in Rome, that you do as the Romans, that's conformity. Okay, that's what I mean by that word. Um, you know, if you like, it means conforming to you know the satanic. If you like, uh, that that's what that word means. I've had people in churches actually complain that uh, you know I wasn't really getting it, not really conforming to the law of the land. I'm like. What you mean, conforming to Jesus is not good enough? You got it, partner. We want a little more out of you. Well, that little more, um, that line, by the way, would cancel my salvation. <laughs> you think we're all going to hell? All of us here? All this thousands of people in this church? You've got to be kidding. All right? Same thing. So it's all like smoke and mirrors. It's like the Matrix. It's all one big menagerie. Every, nothing means what it says. It's all basically behind the little mask is this thing about getting your soul. It all comes down to that, folks. There is nothing else going on. You targeted individuals out there. Now you see that you're not the only one targeted. Am I right? Didn't I tell you that this whole thing was going to broaden? so that everyone's targeted, and you can help them now because you can tell them what's happening. They're being spied on. People are beaming things at them. <laughs> I only laugh because I've been aware of this since I was, I don't know, about 15 or so. You know, and I'm glad I'm not alone, and people are reacting to it now. And, yeah, they'll use their, their high-tech stuff, but the high-tech... See, you're, you're putting high-tech too high up on the list. Beyond the high-tech is the spirit of these people that would actually spy on a person, target, say, a, a woman in her apartment, uh, break, continually break in there, and eventually, you know, what, get... Uh, have some sexual encounters going on and film it and put it on the Internet. I don't, you know, whatever it is. I've, I've, I've known people that were... Um, Gang stalked, and one wound up in the hospital with a with a with a cut on her leg, and then that got infected, and she died. But before she died, they were in her. She moved to a new apartment, thinking she was getting away from it. And no sooner did she move in that they started putting holes in the wall, moving items out of clothing, items around, stealing her uh, panties, and then putting them back in in a, in a different place so she would figure out that she was being watched. And, you know, this was going on. She was complaining about it, about putting, you know, she felt there were cameras and surveillance on her. She felt she knew the guy that was doing it. And then and then she has some mystery, Ill, you know, she get, has a gash on her leg and then dies in the hospital. That doesn't, you know. I mean, that was, that was classic, right? Classic. And, you know, um... And she felt the people in the hospital were in on it as well. And uh, so what really caused them all to operate in, a, in such a coordinated manner? And why would they come into her house and move her panties around and her put, you know, like she felt, felt there was a hole in the wall that wasn't there or something. She felt there was a camera in it. And, you know, some other things that she reported. Uh, along with just, uh, she was a, uh, uh, she became a greeter at Costco or, or Sam's Club, one of those. And that was a good job for her. She liked that job, and she was doing that job fine. But you see, it just, things weren't okay. And then she had a daughter. I couldn't really intervene much, but I mean, this was all, this was all coming, you know, the information daily. She was reporting, her name was Mary. And she was reporting and reporting and reporting it to me. But before we could intervene or do anything, you know, she was dead. And her daughter had to be adopted. We actually said we would take her daughter in if she couldn't find anyone else. And she went with family, with extended family. And I can only think that maybe she's targeted too. But what was Mary? Mary was a lamb. <laughs> Mary, you know, and what was her, you know, what, who who she belonged to? Jesus. And so who was targeting her? Well, satan people under the satanic spirit 
being controlled remotely by others somewhere else. What kind of things were they doing? Harassing her psychologically so that she would, you know, flip out, that, that she had no privacy, that, you know, wherever she went, they would break into her place and move things and do things and just suddenly stalk her and harass her. And it just it kept getting worse and worse, like they were turning up into a knob. And what happened? She got a cut on her leg and went to the hospital and died. It got infected. Oh, no, it's not, you know, it, it's, yes, she was sacrificed. So what was the whole deal of the gang stalking? It led to human sacrifice. She's with the Lord. Her faith was strong. I prayed with her quite a bit. She's with the Lord. But that was just one incident in 2004, I believe it was. You know, just to show you that I understand what, you know, a lot of you think that it's just about harassment and maybe trying to get you to commit suicide or, no, it, it, it's like having a disease, electronic harassment and gang stalking, and it will get worse and worse. You know, the people would say, well, the end goal isn't usually death. It's just, a, you know, it's like a parasite on a host. No, it's not. The end goal is death. You know, but first to cause as much human misery as possible, to make people unable to sleep, to, to, to drive them out of their mind, and then monitor them through cameras. Because they get off on it. And then if they, if you know, um, and eventually to wear them down until they're, you know, institutionalized, they break down in sickness, whatever. And then many of them don't survive. So it's, um, you know, being harassed to death. Well, now this whole Stasi technique of, Harassing people has gone global. <clears throat> no, I still get them, you know, um, you know, the transmissions. And it's always the same thing, you know, uh, degrade, humiliate, um, get you to hate yourself. You know, and what does Satan do? You're no good, you're lousy, nobody, you know, you have no respect, whatever, it goes on and on like that till you finally, if you agree with him, it's, it's the same voice. You're right, I'm a piece of crap. I don't deserve anything. I should just, you know, and then they'll come to you with an offer at some point. How would you like to get out of being this kind of targeted individual victim type? And come along with us, and then you can be a perpetrator. Okay. Then your life is suddenly good, isn't it? What would you rather be, the one on the other end of that uh, microwave or the, you know? So that's, you know, it's, it's an ongoing thing like that. And it's, um, God has somehow arranged it all to be like that, but it all gets down to the individual the individual, the soul. If it belongs to the world, then you're conformed to the world. If it belongs to Christ, you're conformed to Christ. It's that simple, folks. Your solution of salvation, you Christian musical artists, <laughs> your um, solution is still Christ. Claiming you have him and getting all filled with uh, your own spirits and your own being high on it um, as a prelude to getting together and, 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 and worshiping the beast is, um, let me put it this way. If you're a father and your kid does bad things but he's honest with you, you're going to punish him but you're going to be fair. If you got another kid who does all the same bad things, but he lies to you about it, the wrath is going to be far more severe than on the kid that was being honest. You bet there's something really wrong with this one. We have to now, on top of disciplining him for what he's done wrong, catch him, show him that he didn't get away with it, and then deal with the spirit of lying that's in him. It's a lot more of a problem, isn't it? And that's what you have here. Most people lying about salvation 
because they're lying about the other thing. Um, they all lie about it. Everyone acts like it doesn't exist. That's the devil's greatest trick. He doesn't exist misery rather than joy. It makes them look like they're, um, they're murderers and psychopaths that just want to kill everybody rather than foster life. It makes them look like they're reprobates who are, whose perverted pleasures are, uh, are uh, king and uh, the rules be damned, especially God. Now, many of you are saying, I don't want to live in a world like that. Well, I'm sorry, you're here. You're here as uh, God's about to activate you and, as, uh, and is activating you right now as a witness to all the things you're seeing. Your prayers are answered. He guides your steps. He will eventually um, unleash the real power of who you are within you. Christ's return within and without. So it's win-win for you. So there's no, no problem. I just have to mention all this. I don't really want to get into, you know, I'm not predicting gloom and doom. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just saying in general you can expect to see. I don't know how long it would take before there's a, a Islamic caliphate here. But, I mean, you can eventually expect to see all those things. that We predicted the uh, Arab Spring. We predicted Libya. We predicted everything we predicted has been 1,000% confirmed. All the results that we predicted have been confirmed. And, and, and the, the, but the big thing I predicted was even if you predict it and confirm it and report on it, it's going to keep happening, even though you're 100% accurate in saying uh, the Arab Spring was a joke. It's just the Muslim Brotherhood taking over. Yes. Okay, Obama's in the Muslim Brotherhood. Yes. Obama hates Israel. Yes. I firmly believe, and I make this prediction, that the end will go badly for him. He'll be very successful to a point. No, one, no man will be able to stop him. And then all of a sudden he will come to nothing and no one will be there to help him. And that's repeated in the book of Daniel and Daniel 8, that theme, and in uh, Daniel 11. The same exact scenario. He will be left alone with no one to help him. All the power will have just fleed from him. Like that power wasn't his anyway. His usefulness will be over and no one will, there'll be nobody there to, to, to reach out to. It will be a terrible, terrible, tra tragic end. Uh, there'll be no one there to see the tragic end either. So there'll be no one there to lament about it. Uh, such is the way with arrogant, um, narcissistic dictator types. They come to a sudden end, usually. 